ask that you bring uh, comfort and peace to those people and to those families in those situations. And um, God, we're again so careful to give you honor and praise uh, for that which you do for us. God, so many blessings um, that we are remiss to give you praise and glory for. Uh, Lord, again, we are thankful um, that you want to have a relationship with us and that you've left your word um, as a map for us to follow for life uh, and to be able to hear and to know about your son Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. Uh, Lord, I'm thankful for that and I'm thankful to be able to study your word uh, and to proclaim it uh, to the world. And God, I thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray and amen. Well, tonight uh, we're going to talk about more than you can handle. You ever heard that expression before? Um, the expression a lot of times people use is that God will not put more on you uh, or on us than we can handle. And so I've heard this expression used several times from lots of different people. Um, I've heard it used from uh, Christian people, people that I respect and people that I love. Um, and it's a good saying. Um, and it sounds like something that the Bible might say or, or something close to what the Bible might say. Uh, the problem is, uh, is that it's not scriptural at all. And so we have to be very careful um, about things that we hear people say or that we uh, kind of might sound like it's biblical um, because even uh, Satan with Eve used scripture, didn't he? Uh, he used scripture to trick her uh, into eating of the forbidden fruit. And, and Satan, he, he knows scripture and, and he wants to make scripture sound exactly like what the Bible says and then he twists it a little bit, doesn't he? And so um, that expression, God will never put more on us than we can handle, is one of those expressions. Um, it's actually not in the Bible at all. Um, as a matter of fact, the Bible teaches um, just the opposite. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're actually going to see what God's Word says about uh, Him putting more on us than we can handle. And if that is true, um, what are we to do? Um, and so uh, I want to kind of give this disclaimer uh, tonight because uh, when we talk about things that, that God allows to happen to us, um, I understand that some of you are in some desperate situations tonight. Um, it, it does not escape uh, our attention uh, in the church. It doesn't escape your friends or your family. Um, and it certainly, certainly does not escape um, the eyes of God. And I know some of you have life-threatening conditions. You, you're either dealing with COVID, COVID in your family, cancer, heart disease, many, many other situations. Uh, maybe you've lost loved ones uh, over the past few months and, and it just seems like it's just unbearable. You can't take it. And uh, maybe you've lost a job and you don't know how to pay your bills or you've, or you've lost your spouse or, or, or a dear family member or maybe you're in some great physical pain and uh, maybe you're caught up in some addiction. But whatever the case is tonight, now I know God has allowed that to happen to you. Um, and those cases... Uh, that in your life tonight are, are, are so real um, and, and they're so desperate and, and you're hurting and I know this and um, I, I can tell you this uh, there's always things in life uh, that are more than we can bear um, we, we know uh, that God will allow things to be put on us God does allow uh, certainly more uh, than we can bear to be put on us and, and we want to read what God's word says because it's God's word that is the truth, right? Um, we believe God's word to be truth. We believe it by faith. Um, and we believe that God has preserved it for us, even today in 2021, uh, to use uh, as an instruction manual. And so first, let's debunk the myth, okay? Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 is the verse that a lot of people um, kind of twist around into saying that God will not put more on us than we can handle. And so let's just see what God's word says and read it in context uh, and, and see what the true meaning of the scripture is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and beginning in verse 13. And this is what the Bible says. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And so 
Again, this is the verse that most people misquote when talking about uh, what God will and will not put on us. And so notice, I want you, I, I want you to notice that tonight, the verse is not talking about uh, troubles of life, pain, or pressure, um, those bad things happening. But Paul is actually talking to the church about sin. Uh, you can read the, the verses leading up to this. He's talking about the sin of Israel, uh, the sin in the past that actually he's pointing out to the church that they can learn a lesson from the nation of Israel in the Old Testament uh, and how they sinned and, and strayed away from God. Um, and then he's using that to apply to them and the sin that they're taking up in now because um, this is actually, I think, the fourth letter that Paul had written. It's the second to the Corinthians. Um, but he's concerned because he's heard some things that are happening in the church and, and how some of them are falling away and listening and going back and, and some things like that. So he's trying to instruct them. And so he's talking to them about sin. And what he's saying is that we um, do not have to worry about sin overtaking us if we trust God. And so um, God is faithful uh, to provide a way for us to escape the sin uh, that results from temptation. And see, and so what we need to understand tonight is, um, is that temptation comes to every man, woman, boy, and girl. Uh, if you are of the age of accountability, uh, the enemy, Satan, is going to tempt us. And so uh, the temptation to sin is not sin. Uh, we, we actually have a choice and uh, we can take the bait and fall into temptation, uh, which the result is sin, uh, or we can withstand the temptation uh, and avoid the result, um, which is sin. And so we know this because the Bible says that even Jesus was tempted, right? Um, now, the scholars argue, well, could Jesus have sinned because he was God? No, he couldn't have sinned, uh, but he was man and he was still tempted. Uh, that's not the argument that we're trying to debunk tonight. We uh, are talking about Jesus, uh, this, Jesus, was, uh, uh, Jesus was tempted, uh, yet without sin. Um, he was tempted in every way a man is, the Bible says, uh, and, and yet without sin. And so this, this enemy, dev, the devil, Satan, he came to Jesus and he actually came to Jesus in his weakest time. He was, uh, had been uh, fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. And of course, uh, when does the enemy show up? He shows up when we're at our weakest, right? And so we know uh, that Jesus never sinned. Uh, he did use scripture uh, to defeat Satan uh, every time uh, Satan tempted him. Uh, and so we can still use scripture as well. But uh, Paul says uh, that it's common for man to be tempted. Uh, and we are tempted daily uh, by the enemy to sin. But the temptation is not the sin. Uh, we may uh, also think that the temptation is great. Uh, the Bible says that God is faithful not to allow us to be tempted over what we can bear. And, and actually not just be tempted more than what we can bear, but that God will provide a way for us to escape the temptation uh, to, to keep from the result being of sin. Um, we know that it's not God that tempts us. The Bible says that God tempteth no man. Um, it's the enemy. It's Satan. Uh, go back to the story of Job. We know that uh, Job uh, chronicles a, a time in Job's life when uh, Satan actually went to God uh, and asked him if he could tempt Job. Uh, and so we know the story of how um, God allowed Satan to take away uh, all of these things from Job, the, his, his success and his money and his lands and uh, his, uh, pro, you know, his cattle and things and even his family, uh, even his health. Um, and we know that uh, Job never sinned uh, in this, but it wasn't God that tempted Job, it was Satan. And so God allowed that to happen. And so God always provides a way out uh, for us to keep from sinning. Um, the Bible says that we may be able to bear it. And that bear means to uh, not fall to uh, the temptation. Um, again, we have a choice, right? Uh, and so if we trust God uh, and, and ask him uh, to help us through the temptation, uh, then we can uh, keep from sin. And so we can endure the temptation 
without sin, the Bible says. But while temptation uh, may sometimes come in the form of trials, it's not the same as trouble that we face in life uh, that we described earlier. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. They say that God will never put more on us uh, than we can handle, meaning uh, the, the sickness and the death and the disease and the job loss and the money problems and uh, the addictions and things like that. Um, those uh, are, are trials of life that come on us and, and certainly uh, have to do with sin sometime, uh, but they're not what Paul was talking to the church at Corinth about here. Um, as a matter of fact, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. So just go a couple of pages over uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And again, we're, we're trying to see what God's word says. I I know that some of you trust me, and I, I certainly wouldn't uh, mislead anybody in the world, uh, but it's always God's word that is the truth. It's always God's word that we need to seek and search out to see what God says, um, and, and it's not about trusting man, is it? It's about trusting what God says. Uh, and so again, I wouldn't try to mislead somebody, um, but you check it out for yourself is what I'm saying, okay? Always, no matter who the source is. Um, check out God's word and see what it says because it's the ultimate source for truth. It is God's word. Uh, and so 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and let's look at verse 8 through 10 right here and see the situation that Paul finds himself in, okay? <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 8, this is what the Bible says. For we would not, brethren, have you uh, ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Uh, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. And so this is actually the truth about what the Bible says, and, and Paul uses an instance uh, with him, uh, and it's actually him and what scholars think is Timothy. Um, Timothy had left, uh, or Paul had left Timothy in charge of the church. Uh, and I think this was later after that where Timothy had, had rejoined Paul, they said. Uh, but the passage gives the true meaning of what God will allow to be put on us. Look at verse eight. He says, for we would not, brethren, that, that have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even of life. Um, and so what this says is, is that Paul and company, again, uh, probably Timothy, uh, says was pressed out of measure above strength, despaired even of life. I think uh, this means that Paul and Timothy were fearing for their lives in Asia. Uh, wherever they were, um, they were preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's all they were preaching. Um, and people wanted them killed. Uh, people were after them. Uh, and, and the Bible says, or Paul says through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's telling the story that they were pressed out of measure. It means there was some pressure on them. There was some trouble. Uh, there was so much trouble uh, that they, they, couldn't, they couldn't take it. Uh, they, were, they were fearing for their lives. And so um, I think to myself, uh, are some of you there tonight? Um, anyone at the point where uh, the water that you're in is about to suck you under? Are you, are you at the point where you've been treading water for so long and you're just, you're tired and, and you're just, you're about ready to give in? You know exactly what Paul and Timothy were feeling uh, if you were at that point. But uh, I don't think that Paul and Timothy were ready to give up. Um, I think they did recognize, and I think this is important for us today, uh, tonight, uh, is to realize that God does allow things to be put on us more than we can handle. Um, certainly, uh, them fearing for their lives was more than Paul and Timothy can handle, right? Uh, how else do you explain where it says pressed out of measure, above strength? In other words, it was beyond their control. Um, they had no strength to control whatever was going on with them. And I know that there's some of you that are out there um, like that tonight. And, uh, and Paul arguably Arguably, Paul, the greatest Christian that ever lived uh, at the point in his life where he had more on him than he could stand. Um, I have to say this. Uh, one of the reasons that, that God's word is preserved for us today is so that we can identify uh, with the people and the situations that were going on back in biblical times. 
Um, does it not sound like the situation that some of you are in? Uh, maybe somebody's not after your life, but maybe you're in a life-threatening situation. Um, are there things where you feel um, pressed out of measure? Do you feel like it's above your strength to handle it? Do you feel like you have lost control and you don't have any control uh, over what's going on uh, in your life? Um, this is why God has the Bible preserved for us to be able to see and to find truth because there's truth in God's word. And, and, and the truth is we're going to see what Paul did because it was, it was out of his strength. It was uh, his life on the line uh, and he was pressed out of measure. And so what did Paul do? How did he deal with the trouble um, that was certainly life and death? Well, um, it's the example uh, for us to be able to use tonight. And for those of you that are in these situations that are so desperate, uh, maybe I didn't even mention or, or uh, come close to mentioning your situation. Maybe it's hidden from other people. Maybe it's just between you and the Lord, but it's a dire situation. Let's see what Paul did uh, and let's use that. Uh, it's this, because it's the same thing that you and I can do tonight. The Bible says that God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so if Paul did something then, it's valid for us to be able to use tonight. And you know what Paul did? Do you know what he did? Let's read verse nine and let's see. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. You see what Paul says right there? He says, I'm not gonna trust in myself. It's not me, he says, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver. You see, Paul and Timothy, if it was Timothy, they turned to the Lord. They put their faith and their trust in him. They decided not to trust in what they could do, but what God was going to do. And I think Paul and Timothy both, even young Timothy, as young as he was, um, they had seen God move and work so many times, they trusted God. It, it wasn't a blind faith. And, and I know tonight, maybe maybe you don't even know the Lord is your Savior tonight. And, and that's the first thing that's got to happen. You, you've got to understand that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And, and all you have to do is call out to him and ask him to save you and forgive you of your sins. Uh, but from there, uh, whatever life that you have left, it's a lifetime of learning to trust God. It's a lifetime of seeing him time and time again be faithful to us. Not that he's not going to allow more on us than we can handle, but that when we turn to him and we put our trust in him, <laughs> he handles it for us. You know, there's an old expression <coughs> that God works at the end of self. I don't remember where I got that. I think it was Dr. Tony Evans that I heard say that. Uh, but it certainly proved true in my life. God works at the end of self. You know what you and I do, or at least maybe... Maybe you do. I certainly do. Uh, I always think that I can handle things, right? Uh, you know, I'm a man. I, 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 I'm, I'm a full-grown man. I can, I can take care of myself. I'm, I'm sufficient. Um, I don't need anybody. I, can take, I have enough strength. I can take care of things on my own. Well, you know what I found in my young 51 years of life? Um, what I've learned is that I can't. What I've learned is that, that I don't have the strength. I don't have the answers. I, I can't do much of anything. And, and so God works at the end of self. When we come to the realization um, that we can't do it or we can't take care of it, we trust God and we, we turn it over to him. And, and the Bible said that he's faithful. I love that word right there. He is faithful. Um, and so the old expression that, that God works at the end of self, well, that's the truth. The, the truth of what the Bible says, just like Paul is here, God always puts more on us as Christians uh, than we can handle. And he did for Paul, and he certainly will for us today. But you see, um, again, Paul uh, and Timothy had proven God before. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. That, that To me, that's saying... We trusted him once and he delivered us and we're going to trust him again. And guess what? He's going to bring us through the fire one more time. I think that's exactly what Paul is saying to the church. And I think that he's saying that again to us tonight. What situation do you find yourself in? 
Now, maybe it's small to somebody else, but it's big in your mind. Uh, maybe it's life-threatening. Maybe it's life and death. Maybe uh, you've been laying awake at night, looking up at the ceiling, can't sleep. Uh, first of all, you've got to take care of um, the what happens to me when I die. That's what you've got to take care of first. And, and that's when you call out to Jesus and ask him to save you and forgive you of your sins. You believe that he's the son of God. You believe that he died on the cross and rose again the third day. And if you do that, you call out to him and ask him to forgive you and save you, that starts your road. That starts your relationship with him. Um, and I promise you, however many days that you have left and whatever situation you find yourself in, the Bible says that there's a peace that passes understanding. And that's through a relationship and only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So a lot of people, <clears throat> the next obvious question is, why does God do this? Why does, if, if I read this right, Brother Andy, you're telling me, and I see that God put more on Paul than he can handle. Why does God do this? Well, uh, there's a lot of reasons and, and many, many more messages uh, that we don't have time to preach tonight, uh, but just some things that you might be looking for because it, it's always uh, for our benefit. The Bible says that uh, God works all things uh, together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So there's a reason that God has allowed us to have this come into our lives. There's a reason. Uh, maybe it's just to grow our faith, uh, to put our trust in him because that's certainly what he wants us to do ultimately in every situation, right? Um, to understand that we're not in control, that he is, and we need to trust him for the outcome of whatever's going on in our life. Our job uh, is, is to trust God, and his job is to take care of the rest. And so there's uh, some other reasons. Maybe he's trying to get you to see something. Uh, maybe he's getting uh, trying to get you to stop doing something or to start doing something. Uh, maybe God has allowed this to come in your life to, um, to change your opinion on something uh, or to get you from point A to point B. Uh, whatever the case may be, there's lots of reasons God allows uh, bad situations to come into our lives. But again, ultimately, uh, it's so to, our faith will grow and we'll trust him. Look to him for answers and certainly not within ourselves or social media or um, even uh, some of these other places that people look. Look to God. Put your trust in him. Understand that no matter what happens, that God is in control and it's his will uh, for our lives and to understand um, that we know all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And so tonight, Christian, um, there's lots of reasons God uh, allows bad things to come in our lives. But the most important thing that you and I can do is put our faith and our trust in God. Senior saints, those of you who've been Christians for a while, we need to be reminded that God is faithful, right? We need to be reminded that God is still on the throne. We still need to be reminded that no matter what the situation is in our life, that we can have joy and peace because of our relationship <laughs> with Jesus Christ. And so... He wants us to trust him and him alone. And so tonight, uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, uh, I hope that God's word uh, is a comfort to you. Uh, I hope that you understand that God is always going to put more on us than we can handle. But just like Paul here, we need to trust him uh, and understand that God is faithful. God bless you. Stay safe out there. And I hope that you have a great rest of your week.